Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the fantastic flop of the Fantastic Four. It opened at only $25 million, making it one of the worst openings of all time. Not to mention the reviews put it at 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. All in all, everyone agrees this movie is terrible. And we're going to talk about why that happened, how that happened, from the expert in the matter, Comic Girl 19, everyone. So I heard this movie was terrible. A real stinker, huh? Why are we talking about it? <laughs> Well, uh, it's true, the rumors are true, the movie is not very good, but not for the reasons that you might think. Uh, and it's really interesting because the politics surrounding Fantastic Four are way more interesting than the movie itself, and that's kind of what we'll be focusing on more so than the actual movie. So what's it about then? Okay, so the story starts off with an eight-year-old, Reed Richards. Uh, he's doing science experiments, he's building a teleportation device, uh, and he eventually does it with the help of his friend Ben Grimm, uh, and they end up with some other people, scientists, building a really big one. They go to the other dimension, they get goo on them, they come back, they have superpowers. Uh, but tonally, this movie is intended to be more of a Cronenbergian science fiction mystery body horror movie a la The Fly and Scanners, uh, exploring the personal horror of transformation, which is freaking awesome. I totally love that. I'm a huge Cronenberg person, so I was totally with them on this. However, after about an hour, uh, a title card comes up and it's just like one year later after they get their powers and the film picks up from there and becomes a completely different film tonally. Uh, it's now a suddenly a rushed, goofy, cringe-inducing superhero fight ending where they have to beat Doctor Doom and save the world for no reason and nobody cares and it's not like anything. It's not like the entire hour that you watched before. It's like two what? completely different movies. Really? Yes. That sounds weird. It's really weird because I was sitting there in the theater and I was like, it was, I was an hour in and I was like, this movie is not that bad. What is gonna happen? And then the other shoe dropped and I was like, holy fuck, now I see. The, the first hour isn't perfect necessarily, but I was into it. But again, I'm also a big fan of like, Cronenberg weird horror sci-fi weirdness. It's clear that no one intended to make a movie like this. And what is obvious to everyone that sees it is that the studio totally lost confidence in their director's vision. You know, they saw where it was going, they saw his cut, they were like, oh no, like we can't have this. So they went in, they cut out his ending, the last 30, 45 minutes, and then they put in this giant stupid boss fight ending that is like, makes no sense. And so we just end up with a movie that pisses everybody off because when you watch it and if you like what's happening in the beginning, you know, the last bit is no longer the movie you've been watching. And if you were hoping to have like a stupid boss fight, regular whatever movie, you're not gonna get that in the beginning. So it's just a movie for nobody. Uh, another factor in why it's so bad is that this film features one of the worst all time bad guy costume designs ever to be seen on film. Dr. Doom looks like garbage. Uh, he looks like a bunch of trash bags glued down with some fucking lead lights underneath them. What the actual fuck was that? That, um, oh my fucking God. It's a real head scratcher. Why did he look like that? I don't know. It's crazy that Fox thought that this would be awesome. That was actually Dr. Doom. That was how he looked and stuff. The explanation that they come up with, which isn't a bad explanation, is that, you know, they're wearing these spacesuits when they go over to the planet Zero of alternate dimension, and he falls in the goo, and that his suit fuses to his body, which is, like, cool, right? But they made it look like shit. It just looks like, like, trash bags glued down. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, and it's just a real shame, because Dr. Doom is so rad. We'll talk more about Doom later. When we went to go see this movie on opening night, on Thursday night, you know, before it's real big opening, uh, we were waiting to get popcorn before we went in, and this girl was walking out who had just seen it, and someone asked her, like, oh, it was Fantastic Four, and he went to give her a high five, and then she was just like, it was terrible, and like left the guy hanging and would not give him a high five over this movie, and was like, this movie sucks really bad. So I had that before I went into it too, which was an interesting thing. The final end result is a movie that scores so low with critics, it is historically possibly the lowest rated theatrical released modern comic book genre movie of all time. Yeah, and even uh, the positive comments on Rotten Tomatoes sound negative. Here's one that says, 
It has its flaws, but it's not the abysmal failure that it's being made out to be. That's a positive comment. I, uh, yeah. Is it worse than even Catwoman? You know, I watched Catwoman to get ready to watch Fantastic Four because I thought that this movie was going to be a laugh riot like Catwoman is, but it's totally not. Like Catwoman's way worse in my opinion. It doesn't deserve a lower score than Catwoman in some ways. So are you really mad that you went and spent money on this stinker? Um, you must be outraged, huh? I'm, I'm not even outraged. I'm not mad about it. Uh, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 2, like, offended me. This movie does not offend me. In fact, I'm kind of excited about this movie because, not because of the movie itself, but because of all of the political drama surrounding it is totally fascinating, okay? Something that I'm really into right now is like doomed productions, and this is definitely one of those. Like, nothing went right with on the director's side, on the studio side, with the actors, with, with the audiences. I mean, it's like the stars aligned to ruin this movie. <laughs> like, there, there was some sort of perfect storm to create like this terrible movie, and I just, I love learning about stuff like that. Hope we don't have to pay for this. <laughs> Fantastic Four. So how did this whole mess happen? So here is a timeline of the eight factors that led to the Fantastic Four being one of the biggest superhero flops in recent memory. Factor number one. Factor number one. Fox, not Marvel Disney, owns the rights to Fantastic Four, but in order to keep those rights, they have to continually make these movies, I think about every six years. So the reason that they made this movie is not because they were inspired and had some great idea, but because they were like, oh shit, we gotta make another one of these movies or the rights will go back to Marvel Disney and then our stock will go down because this is supposedly Fantastic Four is a big IP. Even the first Fantastic Four film by Roger Corman in 1994 was only made by a, a studio in order to keep the rights to Fantastic Four and they never intended to theatrically release this movie and just tried to bury it. Although, thank God for bootleggers at conventions, because I've totally seen that shit. They filmed it, made it, edited it, put it together, the whole thing, and never released it. They just shelved it. Factor number two. There is a current trend in Hollywood of hiring young indie directors who have only had one low budget, under $1 million movie uh, under their belts that has a big success. So then these studios move them up to the big leagues to direct like a blockbuster that's like over $100 million. And there's this huge problem all around with the fact that there's just no middle budget movies coming out right now. It's all tent poles and tad poles. It's million dollar movies and $200 million movies. And the problem with that is it's really hard for a director to go from something that's really small to something that's really big. What used to happen in Hollywood is that you would go up to a little bit bigger budget of a movie, like go to a $20 million movie, see how you do there. And then from there, go up to a $60 million movie and then go to a $100 million movie. But that's just not the way it is anymore. And because of that, these directors aren't groomed and they don't have the preparation they need to handle a giant production like this. I feel like these studios are pulling these kids up to the big leagues because they have this like hot sexy aura about them that younger people, millennials, are gonna wanna watch their films because they like their other weird little film, but they're new to the studio system, they don't have any power, they're very young and inexperienced, so these producers and these studios can push them around and essentially tell them what to do and they're going to do it because they don't have any pull in Hollywood yet. Uh, and that's the thing, there's tremendous money on the line with IPs like this. I mean, they become, there's toys and merchandising and stockholders and all this crazy stuff going on. And unfortunately, you know, these directors can't just make the movie that they wanna make. Factor number three. Fox already has two bad Fantastic Four films under their belt. And if you've seen them, they're very goofy and silly and very bright and colorful. And so, you know, a lot of the higher ups are like, well, we gotta do some sort of different thing this time around. And so when Trank came and said, hey, I have this vision for this darker Fantastic Four, they were like, all right, we'll give it a shot, even though they still didn't understand um, that a darker Fantastic Four, like it's, that's not really gonna work either. Like they didn't really have a lot of faith in this to begin with, but they just let them try it. Factor number four. From the get go, there seems to be issues with this movie coming together. Uh, first of all, there's a big hullabaloo about the casting. Uh, Trank really wants Miles Teller in the cast of, for Reed Richards, and he wins. Fox did not want him, but he totally wins. But then Fox wins the casting of Kate Mara as Sue Storm. Trank apparently did not want her in there. Uh, if you watch the movie, her character does nothing, and supposedly he was like really rude to her on set. I wasn't there, I don't know, but this is just what I'm hearing. 
Also, the script wasn't finished. I mean, normally you have a script, then you go to pre-production, and then you go into your movie. They kept changing things during pre-production, which is not a good sign of anything. So all in all, if everybody is really frustrated before you even start shooting a movie, uh, that does not bode well for your production. Factor number five. Right before they get into production, Fox pulls three of the main action sequences out of the film. Okay, this is understandably going to upset the director, okay? And so at some point during production, he supposedly, or his dogs, supposedly cost $100,000 worth of damage to the place that he was staying at while they were filming. Uh, and then also around the same time that this was coming out, we hear that Josh Trank has also been taken off of the Star Wars movie. He had been tapped to direct the second Star Wars movie coming out. That's no longer a reality. I feel like maybe him being taken off the Star Wars film may have played into the $100,000 worth of damage at his house. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. It may have happened after before, but I just know that these two things led to him being really unhappy, which manifested in him being really difficult on set with crew members, with actors, uh, with production people, with Fox itself. But with all this stuff happening, Fox does not take him off of the director's role. They keep him on and they continue shooting. Yeah, the dogs are, there's no way two dogs did $100,000 for the damage, unless they're like extra large pit bulls or something. Can you imagine doing $100,000 worth of damage to a place that you're staying in? Like, like, what does that even look like? Like, did he take like a sledgehammer and just start fucking up walls? Like, I don't know, I'd love to see like the damage. Like, although who knows, maybe the landlords have said $100,000 just to get more money. I mean, you never know with these things, but uh, it is curious. This, this whole thing is very curious. I was reading that, that pictures of the landlords, like the people who, who were usually, that was their house, was like destroyed. Like somebody had like taken pictures of the people who own the place and was like, ah! <laughs> and fucked up those. So that seems kind of personal, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a dog would do that, but. Factor number six. The first full cut of the movie is screened for the studio, screened for all the employees of Fox around September 2014. Apparently this cut, the ending is very, very different, obviously. I've heard some things from some people who may have seen this that, uh, there was a fantastic car in this cut and that this was totally used. Wait, what's a fantastic car? Well, okay, so the Fantastic Four, they have a little flying car that they drive around. It's kind of goofy, you know, it's kind of it's kind of goofy. They have a car? Yeah, yeah, they have a flying car. I mean, it's like something that came out of the 60s and 50s, you know, the flying car idea, you know, so they have one of these fucking things because everybody wanted one back then when they were, when they came about. So um, when did the car happen in the movie? Okay, so apparently, uh, after they get their powers, you know, uh, there's no one year later title card. Like, I guess Reed goes to South America and he builds a fantastic car while he's down there. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, and at some point they all get in it. Well, let's go. And they drive that bitch through a portal to planet zero and then they fly it all over the fucking planet or something and they do something. I believe that maybe this happened as a way for them to find a solution to get rid of their powers. Uh, I'm Again, I'm not entirely sure. I don't, there was not a big Doom fight in the end. In fact, I don't think that Doom was nearly as big in it. I think he just comes back and I don't know exactly what was going on. But what I do know is that uh, the people at Fox fucking hated it, okay? They were just like, they thought the car was obviously really stupid and they're like, we gotta get that the fuck out of here. We gotta put a boss fight in here because there's no fights happening. Um, also, another curious thing is I've seen a lot of stuff about them in New York, like maybe fighting in New York. So maybe there was something in New York that they cut out too. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure about all these things. So all in all, in this first cut, uh, the ending kind of just fizzles out and is not the, the strong ending that Fox was hoping for. Factor number seven. So after the screening has gone on, the studio is like, Fuck, we do not like this movie. It did not come together how we thought it was gonna come together. Uh, they hate the ending, and so they decide to essentially take the director out of the game. He may have been barred from the editing room, I'm not sure. Uh, I think he was still there, but he was just not allowed to make creative decisions at this point. Uh, and the producers came in, they got new writers to write a new ending, uh, and they shot a completely new 30 to 45 minutes of the film. They cut out the Fantastic Car, 
Uh, they made a big boss fight with Doom at the end. Kate Mara is in a wig all of a sudden, probably because she cut her hair after filming was over and didn't expect to come back. And so they put on this horrible cheap wig on her. It's really bizarre. Uh, and they get like prettier up a whole bunch. It just makes no sense. They just made an entirely new ending for this film that tonally does not match anything that has gone on before it. That's insane. Yes, but that's not all. Factor number eight. The final finished movie is released on Thursday, August 6, 2015. I was there. There was an embargo on it where they wouldn't let people talk about it up until right when it came out. Uh, it immediately has had terrible reviews leading up to everyone coming to see it. And not to mention the director himself went on Twitter uh, that very night to say that this was not the movie that he had made. He had made something fantastic a year ago. Uh, he quickly deleted that tweet, but as you know, the internet uh, doesn't care if you delete it. They've already saved it on their screenshots, so it's gone all over the internet. By the way, he may have some legal problems for saying that. Uh, it's not a smart fucking thing to do. I mean, I understand why he said that. Like, I would be tempted to do that, but you're not supposed to do that. Uh, and so, uh, this bad PR just spreads like wildfire. Nobody goes to see this movie in theaters and it is a total failure for Fox. And it's projected to lose $60 million. And it's really funny because most of the times if a movie doesn't do so well here in the overseas market in like Russia and China, like they can make up for it because those guys don't know. So like, but even they don't want to fucking watch this movie, okay? It's not even doing well overseas, so. <laughs> If you are interested in the idea of doomed movie productions, I would highly recommend checking out Lost Soul. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's a documentary about the making of The Island of Dr. Moreau, the one with uh, Brando and Val Kilmer. And man, that, uh, that documentary really reminds me of a lot of the things that happened in the Fantastic Four situation, okay? It's really fascinating. It's another story of a director who came from these smaller films who did this larger film and that you know he was kicked off halfway through and they had a new guy come in and have to finish it it's it's got a lot of similarities you got marlon brando and val kilmer trying to sabotage the movie with their crazy fuckery you've got uh the director who's used blood magic to get this fucking job and that blows up in his face you i mean i don't, I don't want to ruin it for you i don't it's so good the story is fascinating i highly recommend check it out on netflix and also, uh, you know, if you are interested in watching something superhero related, but you don't want to waste your money on Fantastic Four, I highly recommend you checking out Epic History X-Men Volume 2, The Phoenix Saga, now on Vimeo, on demand for the price of a comic book. It is over an hour long. There is a lot of fantastic reviews. Everyone who's watched it loves it. So check it out, do yourself a favor, it's totally awesome. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Perfect. Good. I know, and they told everybody, they told all the actors, like, they made them think this was a real movie. Like, nobody who was working on it did not know that it wasn't a real movie. Yeah! Although Doctor Doom is actually better in that than any of the other incarnations, which is bizarre, but whatever. There's some really bad CGI, like, early 90s CGI of, like, the Human Torch getting hit by that missile. It's so funny. It's so good. Um, but yeah, it's just, this movie is so bad that it may just kill the entire Fantastic Four franchise forever uh, because it's really, really soured the public's eye of, of this superhero team and of this of this franchise, this name Brandt. But it was so weird because I was watching it for like an hour and I was like, this is not that bad. Like, what's gonna happen? Like, what could possibly happen that will ruin this movie? And then it happened and then I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> The Fantastic Four are bonded no matter what. They all become much stronger when they do things together. It's up to us to save the world. Us, us. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. To stop him, it's gonna take everything you have. Hope we don't have to pay for this. <laughs> Fantastic Four, rated PG-13.